you've seen in the previous projects, the Windows API is really important. All software works by just calling Windows functions to do things. And I was uh, posting on Twitter that uh, I needed a good tool for students to learn about this. And shortly before his death, Dan Kaminsky told me about this tool, which I appreciate, um, API Monitor. It turns out this tool has been around for a long time, but it's really fantastic. And we've got it installed in your cloud machines. So if you run API Monitor, I made a shortcut to mine to make it bigger, as usual. And what this does is it lets you see the system calls that are being used to do anything you want on the Windows machine. It's sort of like a debugger, but instead of freezing the program at certain locations, it just lets you see exactly what has happened. And so, for example, you can monitor Notepad. So um, we want to look for Create File and check these three things. So there they are. Let's see if we can find them. So this is, and it just helps you see the structure of the Windows API. So um, here you can use search. OK, Control F, it says. We'll see if this works. So here's the top left filter. This is the API filter. And um, supposedly I can search at Control F. Let's see if that works in these cloud machines. Oh, it's got a good. So create file. We're going to find the Windows functions that create files. There are quite a few of them. All right. So here's begin create file. That's not it. And what I want is these things. Kernel create file and ntdl create file. So I'll find next. That's cancel create file. There's mf create file. There's create file moniker. There's create file 2, create file A. Um, that's interesting. I wonder if this is what this is in. This is something the container is kernel 32. OK, this is one of the ones you want the kernel 32. Create file A. I want to check that and kernel 32 create file W. Which will be one of these ones down here. Yep, right there. OK. And then NT dill NT create file. That's LZ create file. That's something else. That's it, NT create file. OK, so we found the three we want. Check them. <coughs> and now we're going to launch Notepad. So it is here, just like it usually is in every program. Uh, this yellow folder thing opens a file. And we want to open Notepad. So that's C, Windows, System32, Notepad. All right, an error occurred. All right, I, hopefully that doesn't matter. Monitoring is currently disabled. Um, enable monitoring. OK, I don't know what that was about, but now it's monitoring. Now, um, in the process field, browse to this and double click it. OK, now. I'm supposed to see an argument. No processes are being monitored. I think I need to relaunch Notepad. So it'd be Notepad. Maybe it did trouble launching and connecting to Notepad. Open. Ah. All right. Um, I don't know what's happening here. I wonder if uh, some kind of update or something is getting my way. Let's see if I can launch Notepad first and then monitor it. <clears throat> All right, there's Notepad. And now I want to um, try to monitor the running process. Run this as administrator, which would seem to be a good thing. Yes, and then I should be able to connect to a process. Um, and I think it remembered what I had checked. It looked like it did. Kernel 32. I appreciate that. I don't have to hunt for find those again. It remembered. Good. So now I want to connect to a process. Um, type the location of a process. Oh. All right. 
well, let's try this. Um, it's going to launch this process. Let's see if this works. C Windows. I'm having to use a slightly different process, but let's see. System 32. Notepad. .exe. And then the arguments are going to be new file, my new file. Dot text. All right, and it'll go there. That's fine. Then okay, let's see what that does. Good. That offers to create a file. That's what we want. So I say yes. Okay, and now what it did was it captured the API calls right here, just like Wireshark might catch network traffic. These are the API calls that created that file. It went to kernel base nt create file and called it with a read attributes and so on and then my new file here a whole series of things so if I click one of these calls like this one with my new file dot text it's going to show me exactly what happened here here's all the parameters so it shows file share read and it shows you the value of these things pre-call and post call and someplace in here should be the name of the file. So it was uh, handle return open existing um, generic read. Yeah, but here it is. Here's the name of the file. An address followed by my new file dot text. And when you're done, it's there too. So you can see all the calls it made to system things and the arguments. So you can see what's happening inside the operating system. And there's a flag here to find. And the part that I thought was fantastic was. Um, stealing a password. So let's go to monitored processes uh, here. Here I can terminate the process. Right click, terminate. And maybe I'll quit Notepad out here and see if that helps. And uh, then I have to right click again and remove. Yes, remove process. Okay, good. Now, I'm going to clear the filter. So uh, collapse the tree elements like this. There. Then click in the boxes to clear them right. So I can clear this one. That clears everything inside there. And uh, I guess that's the only one. Data access. Oh, here's the one. NT native. All right. Good. That's the native API NT dill. All right, now um, I'm going to launch your MoCut desktop connection. And by the way, I just added an RDP server for you to use here uh, because you don't have them. You're not using RDP in this class necessarily. So you can use, huh? Ah, here we are. You can use my server, wind.samsclass.info. So let's launch that remote desktop connection to wind. Dot Sam's class dot info and um, then you show options and put in a username and, and password here. Username is going to be test use, just anything. You're not going to get in, but we're going to see it capture those uh, credentials. All right, so give it test user, and now we want to find MS. TSC in the running processes pane. So here's the running process. This is how you connect to a running process. And it's TS is terminal services. That's it right there. MSTSC. That is Microsoft Terminal Service Client, I think. And we want to right click and start monitoring that process. And there we go. And now in the API capture pane, we want to go to data encryption and crypt32.dil. So I think again this is a job for control F crypt32 <clears throat> okay there's crypt32.dil and we want to hit crypt protect data it uh, looks like there's more options here. This I wrote this on a different version of Windows, now that I think about it. Crypt protect data. Uh-huh. 
Well, this is a problem. Oh, I'm in Certificate Crypt 32. Maybe there's another one. Because uh, I need to find the one in Data Encryption and Decryption. Let's just try Control F again and find Next. Ah, uh, there is one there. Oh, there's more. Okay, I'm looking for the one that has Crypt Protect stuff in it. Uh, maybe this one, Certificate Store. Another one in Data Encryption and Prevention and in Decryption which would be data conversion. Data encryption and decryption. Okay, here's the one. There we go. And we want crypt protect memory and crypt unprotect memory. There. Now we'll see the encryption routines. And now just uh, connect in your remote desktop connection and give it a password. So it's test user connect. And I'll give it test pass. And OK. And then it won't let me in, but I get a bunch of action here. And now some of these will contain the password. Um, not this one, but maybe these green ones do. I'm just looking at the parameters. And the one I thought would do it is Crypt Protect Memory. All right, there, you don't even you see your password in the hex buffer. Oh, over here. We'll see the pass in the hex buffer, which I think I'm not seeing here. Oh, there it is, test user. And uh, I thought I would find test pass in there. But all I see in there is test user. There is test pass right there. OK, good. Anyway, that's the point. That's what I wanted to show you. It's kind of nice to peek inside the operating system and understand how it works. I'll stop.